Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz, and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. Well, we waited here as long as we could. It's 11.30 a.m. Central. Central time. And uh, we're gonna hit the road. Uh, I hope it's okay. There's an exit in like two miles, so. And there's a plow here now. Well, yeah, but he's just working on this area. Roads aren't as icy today, but they're seeming pretty icy already. Um, oh yeah, fish down. I'm gonna slow down here so that I can correct in time. Hopefully. Um, uh, today, today's gonna be a good day, right? Right. Right. No repeats of last night. of winter. This is just the tail end. Add props to the crazy people of North Dakota that live here. Um, there was a place where our car got stuck in the snow. That left side, that thing hanging off the side of his truck, that drops down and it's a secondary plow. Yeah. And he's got a third dairy plow as well. A third dairy. That third guy dairy. is plowed up. Yeah. He's a triple. He's a matrapa plow. A what? A triple matrapa plow. Oh. I thought he was a tricera plow. <laughs> Bismarck, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know who sunk the Bismarck? The British. The British sunk the, Bis the Bismarck. Blah, 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 blah. But did you know that the Bismarck was not an American vessel? It was a German vessel. Yes, the British sunk the German vessel. It killed like 2,000 people, which is Continue on State Street pretty three sad. Quarters of a mile. Yeah. War sucks. Um, but that was like 1941, 1941, long after Bismarck 
was founded as a city. I don't even know what year the Bismarck was founded. Probably in the late 1800s would be my guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But it is the Bismarck, North Dakota, and the Bismarck, the Bismarck ship, are named after the same person. Oh. Yes. That's fascinating. So fascinating. That big building there with the triceratops in the window, I think that's where we're going to the uh, North Dakota Heritage Museum. North Dakota was founded in 1875, and the gentleman, Otto Von, I think it's Otto Von Bismarck, he uh, was a statesman in Germany who was kind of responsible for the modern politics of Germany. He was, he was a really big deal. And uh, North Dakota had a lot of German settlers and I think that's probably why there was such an influence here and in, that they named their state capital after Prince Bismarck. Well, that sign says North Dakota Heritage Center, <laughs> but it's covered in snow appropriately. <laughs> and here's the parking lot. It is free to enter this. And from the information I found on the Goog, it looks pretty cool. I think there's dinosaurs in there. Still? Still. Is that a big piece of petrified wood? Uh, yes, indeed it is. We'll check that out when we get out of the van. Thank you, Opal, for taking us here. Yeah, making us here safely. Yes. Nice. No, that's petrified wood. Ah, man, I get that wrong all the time. This actually looks like it might be agatized right there. Yeah, look under there. Oh, yeah. It's pretty. It's nice. I mean, petrified wood. Oh, it looks like there's... It's oh, a whole a row, of row of it. Yeah. Buried under the snow. Oh, and the uh, cannonball concretions. That's awesome. <laughs> They're just buried. I want a picture of those. That desert rose cluster. Appropriate first stop. 13. 13 is pureite algae. Wow. Pyrite algae? It says pureite. But it looks like it pyrite. It looks like pyrite. I, I'm kind of curious about that. I'll have to look that up. You're right, P-U-R. Might be a typo. Could be a typo. Well, then what's number 21? Uh, number 21 is pyrite. And it's spelled it right. Yeah. yeah. Might In just Spain. be a misspelling. Um, Ooh, what's so number uh, 40 there? Number 40 is calcintite. Ooh. From Missouri. It's that blue one. Oh, pretty. Dustin and Jeff need to get a hold of some of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, Look at that desert rose. Ooh, it's beautiful. We'll try and show you most of these, but I'm sure that we can't show you them all. Okay, I think there's a lot to see. Let me see what number seven. Oh, interesting. It's so pretty. Look at all those cabs. Yeah. What's number ninety seven? Micah. 
Oh, those are really nice mica books. Yeah. 117 is Hulandite. Look at this sweetwater agate, 110. Admire these caps real quick. Is it bad when, uh, Stuff you played as as a teenager is in a museum. <laughs> okay, this is really awesome. So, meet Dakota. You are looking at one of the rarest fossils in the world. We seldom know exactly how an animal died. Dakota was buried in hard sandstone and had bite marks on its body. Did it drown crossing a stream? Did a predator attack it and drag it on the water? Who knows? What we know for certain is that Dakota was attacked, traveled a short distance, died in a stream environment, and was exposed to air long enough for its skin to dry. Stream transported sediments buried Dakota, preser preserving its remaining skin. 67 million years later, a 16-year-old student in North Dakota discovered this fossilized dinosaur mummy and nicknamed it Dakota. Scientists quickly realized Dakota is an incredibly rare specimen because it still has some skin and other soft tissue intact. That's pretty cool. As one of very few intact fossilized dinosaur mummies, this remarkable specimen is helping scientists discover important new stories about life in pre prehistoric North Dakota. That's amazing. Yeah. The texture. And the, the bone in it. Tip of its tail. That's really neat. Apparently, that's the wounded section. There's a giant piece of dinosaur skin. I know some fossil hunters that would love to have some of this stuff. So this is like an impression of... Yeah, it's a 3D printed copy of the original tail section. Hmm. Wow. So that's kind of what it would be like petting a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So that we've pet a, 
buffalo and a dinosaur, or a bison a and bison a dinosaur. dinosaur. I like these, these two. This is a Hesperornis? A western bird. Okay. A large diving seabird. Grew to about five feet tall. Wow. It was flightless. Huh. So it was like a penguin. Yeah. And what's this big guy? And this is a sword ray. A sword ray. Is this actual size? A uh, large foolish thing. At the front of its mouth are one of the defining features of the huge predatory fish, like the tuna and marlin of today. Um, doesn't say if this is actual or... Uh, uh, it's so intact, I would imagine it's probably a replica, but I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, it this thing is huge. Say if it is a replica. Oh. Cast skeleton. So it's. Oh, there it is. It's an actual skeleton. This is what the fish looked like. And you know, it doesn't say that about the um, giant Yeah, so. Oh, wait, no, that's the. Uh, that's the squid. This, okay, so that's, that's real. The. Uh, I don't know. The Tuso Tuthis manga? Probably pronouncing that wrong. That's not about right. Squid that grew to 35 feet and lived in the PRC. Check this out. And this was found in North Dakota. That's crazy. This it, is it's a, a cast of an actual fossil, and it's a, a sea turtle. What's the name of the turtle? Uh, Arshalon. Arshalon. Ruler turtle. A ruler turtle. Now, I don't think this is going to uh, like show how massive this thing is uh, on camera, but its head is probably at least, uh, yeah, that won't work, um, at least three feet across and probably almost four feet. And that's just the head. Look at this shell. Now that you know that that is three by four. They say that these things are, I bet you this one's 15 feet long. I walked in here, I said, there's no way that can be real. But apparently it's a cast skeleton. Gosh, I wonder where the original is. Yeah. And look at the, the detail on that shell. Things battle ready. Bones on the inside, like. Yeah. And uh, the bones on the bottom have that same kind of cool pattern to them. Can you imagine swimming and coming across a 15 foot turtle? <laughs> and I just want to say I love what they've done with the lighting in here. Oh my lord, this whole giant room. Did you know that North Dakota was once a warm, as warm as South Florida? It looked and felt very different 65 million years ago.
Instead of plains and valleys and badlands, western North Dakota was covered with woodlands, ponds, and swamps. Many exotic plants and animals lived here, including dinosaurs, unusual animals such as Mosasaurus, also lived in the ocean, but still covered eastern North Dakota. Maybe a little tiny guy. <laughs> Now, obviously, we're not going to be able to show you everything here because there's just so much. There's a list of public fossil digs in North Dakota. There's the Medora fossil dig, Bismarck area fossil dig. That's where we are. Ooh, crocodiles and turtles. The Pembina George fossil dig. That's where the mos mosasaurs are. And then the Dickinson area, we were there. Now this is a goal of mine, to find a really nice pyrotized fossil. Something like this would be grand. <laughs> it's so cool. Let's check out this leaf fossil. That is beautiful. This is another goal. Petrified pine cone. It's a triceratops horn. tell that this part has been reconstructed but this is the original oh and this part's been reconstructed as well but that's pretty cool so here's a, a palm frond I kid you not we have a piece that is probably a half a size of this, or maybe a third. Uh, two thirds. Two thirds the size of this thing that we found ourselves. In Washington. Yep, we have it in storage. And you know, we al we also found snails when we were there, but it's not from our area. But it must have been a very similar client climate. I can't talk. It must have been a very similar climate in the Hell Creek Formation, Morton County. This place is pretty cool. Um, you know, giant fossils. Uh, giant dinosaur dioramas. Ooh, look at that big piece of petrified wood right there. Let's go check that out. Um, it's amazing the place this pool is free. Um, yeah. Let's check out this petrified wood though. This is just like one room in the museum. Oh. Petrified board wood, bored by uh, ship worms. So cool. Oh, and the spheres are awesome. It's unique to North Dakota. 
Look at that piece. That doesn't even look like it's petrified. That's amazing. That is so cool. Those are giant claws <laughs> on this ground sloth. That's cool. Bison skull is more than 50,000 years old. And that's like at least six feet wide. Look at this frog fossil. It's a leopard frog. Yellow perch. Just look at the detail in that. It's a early North Dakota room with a lot of native um, artifacts and dioramas pottery clothing, etc.
this is me. It's like a circular area where you can sit and be immersed in the sounds of a native village. This has got to be my favorite exhibit. This is a mural. But the way it's done with like surround sound and like surrounding you with the mural at the same time. Just all the random sounds. This is really cool. Here's the little time lapse of painting the mural. It's pretty cool. Ine rakka wid sahnish na kuka wahu na narahna nogu. Tiras stehu sahnish, witirana nishu, ach nishtatu, tutitak huknanu, anuna rich nishtatu, tut away wheel at na nishu, nikuti nawaruhti. Crazy Dog Society headdress, circa 1875. thought this dress was interesting. It's uh, circa early 1900s. Wait, you see the flag? Like a buffalo skin, little canoe or boat. Bull boat. Nineteen hundred Holland Special. It's only seven hundred dollars.
this is the North Dakota history and future uh, section. There's just so much stuff to this uh, museum. We just can't show it to you all in one video. Oh, beautiful. This is a Spanish-American Spanish War cannon. Ooh. Look at how ornate that is. What year was this? Uh, 1800s, uh, 1898. 1898 cannon. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. It's a uh, Minuteman missile base. The Auto Shade Family Sod House, 1908. This is a Erskine Automobile 1929 Model 52 Cabriolet, marketed by Studebaker to compete against Ford Model A. You can tell what interests us more, uh, as Liz just said. Um, we're in the agricultural section, and we're not filming much. Um, but oh, there's some cool stuff here. But we walked over to this oil drilling thing because. It shows the rock layers <laughs> of different areas. But yeah, there's there's some cool old cars in here. Uh, lots of old clothing, some guns, an old soda fountain. Liz will get that one. Just lots of cool stuff. Like this room is full of miscellaneous. Um, stuff from Dakota's history and it's pretty cool uh, I urge you guys if you're if you're in the area of Bismarck North Dakota come check it out it's free that's, that's our stuff we like that we love free stuff that we can show you guys that you may never, may never get around to going to they do have some neat exhibits here Um, excuse me, I'll have a Coca-Cola, please. Somebody? Anybody? This guy? Can I get a root beer? Root beer float? Yeah. I'm going to have to go around the corner and do it myself. Oh, okay. Oh, there's glass. <laughs> oh, you can't get back there? How are you supposed to make me a, a root beer float? She was gonna do it too, guys. There's a cliff to sit at. This one, birches. That's really cool. That's of work. Confetti landscape, wow. That's, <laughs> That's really cool. Old US well. 
well, old, old U.S. mail wagon. That's tiny. This is a model of the USS North Dakota. These are all items from the USS North Dakota. In 1915, school children across the state raised the $16,000 to uh, present the North Dakota with this silver set. The whole set weighs 169 pounds of silver. <laughs> wow. That shot out the window was this. So 2,000 pound figurehead, the bow plate from the USS North Dakota. Okay, let's go. And we're on our way out here and there is a collection of pretty unique guns. That is an anti-tank Mauser from 1918. And it's probably six feet long, but look at this one below it. Number 25, a Spanish single-barreled shotgun 12 gauge. <laughs> that is a huge barrel. Old machine gun, water-cooled. And then a bunch of uh, other rifles up here. And some pottery. And finally on our way out, this giant mammoth. And then they also have a gift shop and a cafe as well. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. I can't believe that was free. That was an amazing museum. Yeah, that is definitely worth the stop if you're in the Bismarck area. Yeah, but um, the lady at the counter told us there's a big storm coming in, which you kind of knew, but like when a local says that. Yeah, when a local says that, you got to worry. Yeah, so I think we're going <laughs> to head east. Yeah, let's try and avoid the storm as much as possible. But we'll see you in the next episode uh, where we're trying to avoid the storm. Who knows what will happen? So hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming along. Bye now. Bye now.